So your students are learning about area and perimeter and you're like, wait a minute, what's the difference? If this question is on your brain, then you definitely want to stick around for this episode of Math 345 Support. What's going on, everybody? My name is Sarah, but a lot of third, fourth, and fifth graders know me as Miss McCarthy. While I'm creating tons of video lessons for students in grades three through five, I thought it might be a good idea to start making some videos for you, for the parents, the teachers, the tutors, basically anybody out there who is looking to help a third, fourth, or fifth grader to make math make sense. So without further ado, let's go ahead and jump on into today's episode. So perimeter and area for third grade. Let's break this down. P -p perimeter we think of p -p plus. Add up all the sides. For instance, in third grade, we're usually working with rectangles, right? So if we are finding the perimeter of a rectangle, and if we were given the measurements of, let's say, six inches, on this side and maybe four inches on this side. Well, let's think about what we know about rectangles. We know that the opposite sides are congruent or equal, right? Meaning if this side right here is four inches, then the opposite side is also four inches. It's congruent. And if the bottom is six inches, we know that the top is also going to be six inches. So if we were to add up all the sides, we could say six plus six, six plus six plus four plus four, or four plus four plus six plus six, or six plus four plus six plus four, whatever, you're going to get the same answer. And when we add those up, we get 12 plus eight or 20. Now don't forget, you have to really make sure that with your students that you are teaching them to include the units. For instance, if I were measuring the amount of fencing, the length of fencing that I would need, and it was all the way around, I wouldn't just go to the store and say, hey, I need 20. No, you would say, hey, I need 20 inches of fence, which is not a whole lot of fence unless you're building it for an ant, but you know. Okay, so include those units in there. 20 inches. Now, a lot of times in third grade, they will receive something like this where it might be broken up into um, a, an array sort of thing, six inches across and four inches down. If it's like this where they're seeing a grid, what they need to do let me get another marker. Okay, what they need to do here is we're going to still add up all the sides, but this time we're we'll be counting around. So one, two, three, four, five, six. That's how we get our six inches. Seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 20 inches. That's another way to count it up if they're seeing it in an array like this. Okay, so again, to review, when we think of p -p perimeter, we think of p -p plus to add up all the sides. Now the perimeter is the distance around a shape, but the area is the amount of space inside of a shape. So like think of like an area rug, it would be the amount of space that that rug takes up. So if we're taking that same rectangle. All right, and let's go ahead and put that grid on it too. Let's say that it was drawn just like this with square units. This is usually how we introduce area to students. Okay, so now what we would be doing because it's the amount inside of the shape, well here's the shape and we're counting up the square units inside of the shape. So to do that, you can actually just count up the squares. That would be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four. Twenty-four. So the amount of space inside of this rectangular area is 24, don't forget your units, that would be square units. Okay, 24 square units. Now if we label the units, we can call that inches. Like over here I had inches, if I said each one of these was one inch, we would label it 24 square inches. But if the unit is not given, we just call it a unit. Remember, with area, we need square units. Area needs square units perimeter, it's just the for units. After we teach students that it is the amount of space inside of an object, we can then go ahead and upgrade their understanding to the fact that, that in order to find the area of a rectangle, we can find the length 
and multiply it by the width. This is the length across, this is the width, and area has the formula of length times width. So what is our length? Well, we have one, two, three, four, five, six across, so that would be six times one, two, three, four, a width of four. And if we did a six times four, I'm gonna use the multiplication mashup that you can find on YouTube. I will use the six song to determine what six times four is. So, hey sixes, I just met ya. You're kinda crazy. Six, 12, and 18, 24, 24. So six times four is 24. And don't forget the square units or square inches in this case. Okay, so that's the basics of perimeter and area for third grade. I hope that that helps you. If you can think of another skill that you know that your students or that your children need help with, feel free to email me at McCarthyMathAcademy at gmail.com with that skill and maybe I can create it in an upcoming episode for you. Also, you can find the same anchor charts that I was showing you today in the expansion pack. Not only this perimeter and area anchor chart, but all of the anchor charts that you would need for third grade. And I'll go ahead and include the link below, that way you know where to find the expansion pack, which goes along with McCarthy Math 155. I'll drop the link to my website. By the way, if you found this video to be helpful, I create tons of videos for students in grades three, four, and five. So you should definitely check out my website in the link below for some more information on what I have for you. Before you head out for the day, I'd like to remind you that you were born for a reason. That's right, you matter. Matter, and what you choose to do with your life matters too. So go out there and change the world in your own special way. And I will see you on the next episode of Math 345 Support. Bye-bye.